The Cobbler Astrologer. Part 2, Arabic Folk Tale. These praises conveyed no joy to the poor cobbler, who returned home more thankful to God for his preservation than elated by his good fortune. The moment he entered the door his wife ran up to him and exclaimed, Well, my dear astrologer, what success? There, said Ahmed, very gravely, there are two hundred pieces of gold. I hope you will be satisfied now, and not ask me again to hazard my life, as I have done this morning. He then related all that had passed, but the recital made a very different impression on the lady from what these occurrences had made on Ahmed. Sit Ra saw nothing but the gold, which would enable her to vie with the chief astrologer's wife at the hem m. Courage, she said, courage, my dearest husband, this is only your first labor in your new and noble profession, go on and prosper, and we shall become rich and happy. In vain Ahmed remonstrated and represented the danger, she burst into tears, and accused him of not loving her, ending with her usual threat of insisting upon a divorce. Ahmed's heart melted, and he agreed to make another trial. Accordingly, next morning he sallied forth with his astrolabe, his twelve signs of the zodiac, and his almanac, exclaiming, as before, I am an astrologer, I know the sun, and the moon, and the stars, and the twelve signs of the zodiac, I can calculate nativities, I can foretell everything that is to happen. A crowd again gathered round him, but it was now with wonder, and not ridicule, for the story of the ruby had gone abroad, and the voice of fame had converted the poor cobbler Ahmed into the ablest and most learned astrologer that was ever seen at Isfahan. While everybody was gazing at him, a lady passed by veiled. She was the wife of one of the richest merchants in the city, and had just been at the Himmim, where she had lost a valuable necklace and earrings. She was now returning home in great alarm lest her husband should suspect her of having given her jewels to a lover. Seeing the crowd around Ahmed, she asked the reason of their assembling, and was informed of the whole story of the famous astrologer, how he had been a cobbler, was inspired with supernatural knowledge, and could, with the help of his astrolabe, his twelve signs of the zodiac, and his almanac, discover all that ever did or ever would happen in the world. The story of the jeweler and the king S. Ruby was then told her, accompanied by a thousand wonderful circumstances which had never occurred. The lady, quite satisfied of his skill, went up to Ahmed and mentioned her loss, saying, A man of your knowledge and penetration will easily discover my jewels, find them, and I will give you fifty pieces of gold. The poor cobbler was quite confounded, and looked down, thinking only how to escape without a public exposure of his ignorance. The lady, in pressing through the crowd, had torn the lower part of her veil. Ahmed's downcast eyes noticed this, and wishing to inform her of it in a delicate manner, before it was observed by others, he whispered to her, Lady, look down at the rent. The lady's head was full of her loss, and she was at that moment endeavoring to recollect how it could have occurred. Ahmed's speech brought it at once to her mind, and she exclaimed in delighted surprise, Stay here a few moments, thou great astrologer, I will return immediately with the reward thou so well deservest. Saying this, she left him, and soon returned, carrying in one hand the necklace and earrings, and in the other a purse with the fifty pieces of gold. There is gold for thee, she said, thou wonderful man, to whom all the secrets of nature are revealed. I had quite forgotten where I laid the jewels, and without thee should never have found them, but when thou desiredst me to look at the rent below, I instantly recollected the rent near the bottom of the wall in the bathroom, where, before undressing, I had hid them, I can now go home in peace and comfort, and it is all owing to thee, thou wisest of men. After these words she walked away, and Ahmed returned to his home, thankful to Providence for his preservation, and fully resolved never again to tempt it. His handsome wife, however, could not yet rival the chief astrologer's lady in her appearance at the Himim, so she renewed her entreaties and threats, to make her fond husband continue his career as an astrologer. About this time it happened that the king's treasury was robbed of forty chests of gold and jewels, forming the greater part of the wealth of the kingdom. The high treasurer and other officers of state used all diligence to find the thieves, but in vain. The king sent for his astrologer, and declared that if the robbers were not detected by a stated time, he, as well as the principal ministers, should be put to death. Only one day at the short period given them remained. All their search had proved fruitless, 
and the chief astrologer, who had made his calculations and exhausted his art to no purpose, had quite resigned himself to his fate, when one of his friends advised him to send for the wonderful cobbler, who had become so famous for his extraordinary discoveries. Two slaves were immediately dispatched for Ahmed, whom they commanded to go with them to their master. You see the effects of your ambition, said the poor cobbler to his wife, I am going to my death. The king as astrologer has heard of my presumption, and is determined to have me executed as an impostor. On entering the palace of the chief astrologer, he was surprised to see that dignified person come forward to receive him, and lead him to the seat of honor, and not less so to hear himself thus addressed, the ways of heaven, most learned and excellent Ahmed, are unsearchable. The higher are often cast down, and the lower lifted up. The whole world depends upon fate and fortune. It is my turn now to be depressed by fate, it is thine to be exalted by fortune. His speech was here interrupted by a messenger from the king, who, having heard of the cobbler as fame, desired his attendance. Poor Ahmed now concluded that it was all over with him, and followed the king as messenger, praying to God that he would deliver him from this peril. When he came into the king as presence, he bent his body to the ground, and wished his majesty long life and prosperity. Tell me, Ahmed, said the king, who has stolen my treasure. It was not one man, answered Ahmed, after some consideration, there were forty thieves concerned in the robbery. Very well, said the king, but who were they, and what have they done with my gold and jewels? These questions, said Ahmed, I cannot now answer, but I hope to satisfy your majesty, if you will grant me forty days to make my calculations. I grant you forty days, said the king, but when they are past, if my treasure is not found, your life shall pay the forfeit. Ahmed returned to his house well pleased, for he resolved to take advantage of the time allowed him to fly from a city where his fame was likely to be his ruin. Well, Ahmed, said his wife, as he entered, what news at court? No news at all, said he, except that I am to be put to death at the end of forty days, unless I find forty chests of gold and jewels which have been stolen from the royal treasury. But you will discover the thieves. How? By what means am I to find them? By the same art which discovered the ruby and the lady s necklace. The same art, replied Ahmed, foolish woman, thou knowest that I have no art, and that I have only pretended to it for the sake of pleasing thee, but I have had sufficient skill to gain forty days, during which time we may easily escape to some other city, and with the money I now possess, and the aid of my former occupation, we may still obtain an honest livelihood. To be continued.